Great, not auto advancing, yes. Okay, so this project that I wanna tell, tell you a bit about, um, the reason it's so, so interesting is because it's using a completely new approach to seismic design with CLT and with mass wood. Um, this whole post-tension core is a concept that was originally come up with in New Zealand, actually. And uh, it actually comes from the precast industry and was, has, has been done down in California for quite some time. But the idea to move it into the wood industry is a reasonably new one. Um, so KPFF consulting engineers from here in Portland have been developing this scheme. And uh, so we've recently come on board this project as the timber delivery partner. And I'll tell you a little bit about what our role in the project is going to be. So uh, a real game changer for mass wood in, um, in North America. So I'm going to try to show you a little time lapse of this thing getting built. So this is you know, how all 12 stories are going to be going up. It's, it's a very simple process. And that's the beauty of mass timber. It's simple. You're basically plugging Lego pieces together. So our company, we're, we're a team of um, structural engineers. We're founded by a structural engineer. But we're a team of builders. So we take an engineering approach to fabrication and installation. So we'll come alongside a, a design team, um, an owner, a client, and become the delivery partner for the whole timber structure. So we take a holistic approach to looking at the, um, the design and engineering of the structure to, to really come up with cost-effective solutions. So that's, that's what we bring. Um, our history has been in a lot of complex timber structures, doing push, really pushing the boundaries with timber engineering. And uh, some of these projects are award-winning. And this here, for example, up in Vancouver is the world's largest all wood roof, uh, where we did all the, the timber panels um, over this big speed skating oval. Um, this is kind of a free form, complex glue lamp structure. So a lot of different complex buildings that we've kind of done in the past. And we're now, over the last five or six years, starting to move towards this mass timber revolution where we're saying, well, hey, why don't we start building standard buildings with wood? Why don't we kind of relearn what we used to do about 100 years ago when we used to build with wood? Um, so yeah, we're doing projects in the States as well. So um, we've got a US company and, and we've been starting to do more and more work down here with the increased interest. Oh, yeah, so today I wanna to talk a little bit about construction techniques, um, about the move away from on-site construction and towards off-site prefabrication, volumetric construction and integration of services and the like into panels or volumetric elements. So first, a little bit about the types of wood we have available. You'll, you'll know many of these different types of engineered wood, um, LVL, LSL. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about CLT and about nail laminated timber. Um, I probably don't have to get into the carbon story. Everyone here seems to know a lot about um, why we should be using wood. So I'll jump straight into to the use of wood. This is, this is using, um, actually, structural lamp CLT for a new district energy center. It's going to be the uh, kind of the, the energy center for all of the University of British Columbia up in Vancouver. And they wanted to build the entire building, which is housing all this um, mechanical equipment out of wood. So CLT walls, CLT floors. And really, CLT is, a, is an incredible product because you can completely prefabricate it off site. So when you drop these pieces into place, they fit like Lego blocks. Um, and CLT, though, is not the only mass timber product. And I'm going to be talking a little bit today about nail laminated timber. For those of you who are on the tour, you would have seen a lot of those projects around here. Um, we take a bit of a different approach to most of the ones you've seen in Portland, the nail laminated timber projects. We prefabricate it all off site. So this is a project where we actually use cross laminated timber for the walls, just a one story school, and uh, nail laminated timber for the roof. And um, the architect wanted to conceal all the services, all the electrical runs. Um, in both the walls and the ceilings, wanted to be routed and concealed inside the timber panels. So here you can see on the left, um, you know, boxes integrated into the walls, and up here this is um, integration of services into a nail lamp panel. That's actually easier than you might think. Um, you can actually recreate that beautiful wood surface um, without too much difficulty. Um, but today, what I mostly wanted to focus on was the T3 building in Minneapolis. Um, this is a seven-story building. Uh, 220,000 square feet of mass timber. So it'll be the largest modern uh, mass timber office, uh, building at all in, in North America. Um, and it's going to be built with panels using this nail laminated timber product. And I'll tell you a little bit about why that, why that is. But first, for some history, um, we've been building with nail laminated timber or, or car decking or whatever you want to call it for quite some time, but well over 100 years. This is a building in Gastown, nine stories, um, about 220,000 square feet. And um, very big building, all built using wood, except for the exterior walls, which are out of brick. This is the, the Butler building in Minneapolis, eight stories, 
And again, uh, much, it's, a, it's actually going to be taller than the T3 project, and it's much bigger. It's about half a million square feet than the T3 project. So once again, we used to know how to build with wood, and we used to actually build really big buildings with wood. And so we're really starting to now take that learning that we used to have and apply it to kind of next generation construction. So these types of connections you see here in the Butler building, we're no, we're no longer doing connections like that anymore. Or um, we're tending to move away, to, away from kind of exposed steel connections towards more screwed, hidden connections, thinking about fire, thinking about acoustics. So um, with nail laminated timber, just wanted to show you a little bit about what's possible and what kind of gave us some interest in the product. Um, and the, the reason we became interested in it is because um, of the actual the aesthetic abil uh, capabilities. Um, so you can do a lot of interesting things with the, with the um, like fluting it, doing two by four, two by six, staggering it up and down um, to run services or even to run acoustic insulation. And also the, the kind of look of it as a soffit. Um, it's got a much more fine line look to it than um, CLT does. Oh, sorry, my screen's gone. But um, so you get a kind of a more striated aesthetic to the underside. So um, a lot of architects were interested in it, and so we decided to start making these panels probably about six or seven years ago, um, because CLT was often, you know, it really hadn't come to its own in North America, and um, it was often more expensive. And so we started exploring with nail laminated timber to try to do a little bit more than just big flat panels and what we'd done for the last hundred years. We started to think, hey, can we make some curves out of it? So this is the idea of taking a whole bunch of boards and moving them up and down in a kind of a curved pattern to create an actual undulating roof. And uh, we took that one step further and actually started rotating the boards to create like a warped free form roof. This is like a ruled surface. And so really pushing the limits of what we could actually do with these types of panels. And, um, and you know, then it's, this is actually a project in China uh, for China's largest residential developer. They wanted a, a visitor center and then lifting these panels into place and figuring out how to splice panels on site which were fabricated off site. So we, we really enjoyed exploring this material kind of as, a, as an aesthetic, aesthetic building material for some higher end projects. But um, recently we started looking at taking this material and applying it to a more efficient, modern timber building. So this is a school, 20,000 square feet, built with these NLT panels, all prefabricated off site. And, and on this job, we kind of set ourselves the challenge of how fast can we build with this material? Because really when it comes down to it, um, our, our labor forces on site are getting more expensive, they're getting less skilled, and the more we can move stuff off site, the better, the better quality our buildings are and the faster they come together. And um, developers in particular really see the, the benefit of this. So here we said, okay, let's not just prefabricate a panel and then place it on a beam and place it on a column. Let's actually integrate panels with beams, all prefabricated as like semi-volumetric elements. So um, including the shear wall. So this is a mass timber NLT floor sitting on prefabricated shear wall, um, like a lateral system. And so these prefabricated beam plus panel elements even come with like the tops of the shear walls embedded into them so that when they sit down, you have the minimum amount of connection you need to do from between the panel and, and the columns or shear walls below. And so thinking about these types of um, fabrication techniques allowed us to erect this you know, two-story building in just one week, five days, 20,000 square feet. And that means your fit-out can start, it means um, everything can start inside the building, you're already waterproof, you're already tied in. And um, the beauty of wood, I mean, everyone's seen a lot of this already, how amazing wood is as a material, and the way it, it really just glows. And so we're seeing a lot of people really, here in North America in particular, wanting to use wood because of its aesthetic qualities. Um, so back to the T3 building. So this is 220,000 square feet. And uh, we're currently, uh, this, is, this is actually from about a month and a half ago, this shot, but we're currently building the, the sixth or the seventh story now. So we're almost about to top out. But um, this project is very interesting because the developer, Heinz, was thinking about how can I create the next generation mass timber building for a cost, from, from a cost point of view? Can I make mass timber compete with stick frame steel. And so how this comes together was really the, the trick here. So this particular project was, uh, went out to the world market as kind of a big tender. And, and we won the job based on our thinking about how to value engineer the connections and how to put the building together efficiently and, and quickly. 
Um, so these are some of the columns coming into place. I don't know if our little videos will work here. But here's like a, a double story column being lifted up. And uh, so that gets lifted, put into place. These are big glue M columns. These are actually, these columns are actually manufactured in Europe. And, uh, and so the, making, putting all these elements together in, in, on site is all about thinking through every detail so that the elements come together perfectly. You don't have room for tolerance problems. You don't have room for quality control issues when you get to a job site where labor cost is you know, 80 or 90 US dollars an hour and your crane's much more than that. So everything has to be pre-planned. Um, so this is, get, this is a more recent shot showing the, the building come up. And uh, these are the last of the um, double story columns going into place. Um, beams similarly, um, thinking about your beam to column connection is absolutely critical to making these buildings come together seamlessly. Um, the way that connection happens, preventing, your, re removing the need for manually installing bolts or screws when you land these beams is important because landing the beams is right on the critical path of your crane. So we came up with some interesting connection details to achieve this without the need of, um, of you know, fastening while, while the beam is hanging from the crane. And uh, really the beauty of wood, you know, the using glue lamb, this is actually spruce glue lamb, European spruce glue lamb with spruce NLT panels and it really, you know, it matches together and it creates a really quite an interesting aesthetic. Um, and then the panels, so like I said at the beginning, these are nail laminated timber panels. So they, um, they're prefabricated in uh, a fabrication facility off site. Um, we set up a, a facility actually in Winnipeg to be able to ship down quickly through to Minneapolis. Um, we fabricated about 1,100 of these panels, and um, so there's about all, over two, two million board feet of wood in this building. So a lot of, and it's all two by eight. So a lot of prefabricated nail lamp panels, and all pre-cut into place, so that when they sit down around the glue lamp columns, they, um, they fit. So I'll show you a little bit of a video of some of these panels flying in. This was just actually taken last week. Um, I was on a site visit there. So you know, each panel is picked from four points um, with simple screws that go into the tops of the panels, and um, and they're they're kind of hook on hook off type system. So it's to when you pick the panel from the truck, it's a very quick system to just hook on and off again. And then seeing the panels fit around the beam. So tolerances and, and Quality control is critical. You don't have the room for, for, for having errors in your panels. Some more shots of the panels going in. So um, yeah, this is really really interesting project because um, a big developer has really taken a stab and said, I think we can start to build with mass timber. I think we can do it cost competitively. I think we can do it efficiently on site. So why do we choose nail laminated timber? Um, this, with this project we actually bid in about six different ways with CLT from Europe, CLT from North America, CLT from North America, um, glue laminated timber sitting on the flat, all sorts of different materials and options for how to actually make this building come together. Uh, nail laminated timber was actually chosen purely, uh, mostly on a cost. Um, and because at the moment it's still a little bit cheaper than CLT here in North America, it is still um, an option that we're really considering for moving forward with these types of buildings. Um, nail laminated timber is different from CLT in that it's not as dimensionally stable. So if it gets wet during construction, it'll tend to expand. So it's one of the things that you need to be careful of. And what we've done is we did a lot of pre-planning um, and thinking about how to tape joints and how to really seal the surface of the panels so that you don't allow water in in the first place. So um, now when you want to bring this type of building together, 220,000 square feet, and you want to do it at the rate of around 30,000 square feet a week, uh, which is what we did the, the last floor in, so that's, that's an entire floor plate in a week, um, you really have to plan it out. There's no room for the wrong panel arriving on site and you having to wait for a different truck to come. So I want to show you a little bit of our, our 3D modeling and kind of how we actually um, plan this building. So this is a little 3D model we built Hopefully you can see that there, where I can actually build this entire building in 3D. So I can see every panel, every panel number, um, and I can actually, if I can get my mouse in the right place, I can actually start to watch the entire structure build itself. 
And um, that is really powerful because it allows us to know exactly at every point in time where the building is going to be, which piece is coming in first. And um, these 3D models, of course, allow us to do things like um, MEP coordination, all that kind of stuff. And even down there in the bottom, you can see the truck. Every, every truck was sequenced and stacked so that you know exactly what truck's coming when and, um, and when it's going to land. And um, here's just a little time lapse of the, the structure coming together. So we're, like I said, we're getting close to the seventh floor. Um, just flow, flew in the last columns the other day. So we got pretty lucky on the weather. Uh, Minneapolis in the winter typically uh, gets at least one big dump of snow. Um, but we got actually really fortunate. So we've had a, a decent amount of rain, but um, not a lot of snow. So we've only maybe spent three or four days clearing snow. So um, we, we released a, an NLP design guide actually recently, um, which basically allows people to know what's possible with this product that's been around for so long, um, but we kind of forgot how to use. And I think um, if you're thinking about going with nail laminated timber, it's important to consider um, prefabrication. Building these panels on site generally does not uh, lend itself towards having a good quality product. Um, so we, we think that nail laminated timber is, is probably one of the products that is going to move forward into this kind of next generation of buildings, but it's not the only product. So we as a company like to be product agnostic. We've built a lot of nail laminated timber, but we would like to see cross laminated timber start to become more cost competitive here in North America, and we think it is. Um, people, especially with European product coming into North America, CLT prices have been coming down. And so um, this, the project I mentioned at the beginning, the framework project, that's going to be all CLT, and we're very excited to start doing more CLT jobs. Um, so I think there's, there's a lot of room for um, improvement and diversity in the mass timber market. And I think it's not going to be one product that ends up being the solution to everything. It's going to be a, a multitude of projects. And the last thing I wanted to mention and just talk a little bit about was the market potential. Um, and we all talk about tall wood, but I want to talk about low wood because, you know, 90% of the buildings we build are not tall. Um, they're the sixth story, they're the eighth story, they're maybe nine or 10 stories. And how can we start to build these types of buildings with mass timber and cost competitively? Um, so, you know, everyone knows the four to six story stick frame, you're going to struggle to compete cost wise. But I think that's not necessarily true. And I think we should start looking at the cost competitiveness that mass timber brings by moving the prefabrication off site, not, you know, literally cutting construction time down in half allowing the fit-out guys to come in way sooner than you could with a, with a standard stick frame. And um, so I think really thinking about uh, pushing these types of buildings like the T3 project, where we're using mass timber on more traditional buildings and proving the cost competitiveness of these is really how we're going to see the, the market grow, the suppliers grow, and the whole industry really grow as a whole. So with that, uh, I'd like to conclude. And uh, ask for, I don't know, do questions now or questions later? At the end. <laughs>